Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, um, legendary Iron Man exquisite timing, our speed run where we're trying to beat the game as fast as possible on the highest difficulty. I am even trying to go for the exquisite timing perk, which means beating the game in four months. Normally that is only possible on commander difficulty, but if we play our cards right, we might be, maybe, maybe uh, be able to squeeze it out. At the moment, it doesn't look totally amazing. I think what is going to break our neck um, is essentially making contact with uh, certain regions. Um, so we would need to start um, or get the perk of uh, making um, immediate contact. I think that's going to be an issue, but who knows? I mean, maybe we can still pull it off. Uh, we are, timing-wise, kind of in the middle of May, so month number three. And we got ourselves a nice little um, classified Intel supply rate. So that's going to be supplies, Alien um, Alloys and Alarium, as well as a hefty, hefty XP bonus if we kill everything. Moderate difficulty means 12 enemies. And in terms of just the squad that we're taking, uh, Diva here is going to go in um, as well as Haywired. Uh, that's our core. And boom, boom. Um, the simple being is going to be our fourth um, in line. So now that I found out in the last mission that apparently the ammunition was bugged and we got ourselves some nice little um, ammunition, might as well going to use that. Um, just double checking real quick. Can we skill any of the soldier abilities that would make it even better? Target definition and distraction are both not needed for us, so that'll be fine. So we're going to go in. And the question of the day is really, do we want a two times cover removal or are we going in with one flashbang? And I think we're going in with two times cover rem It's a difficult decision. Maybe we should take one flashbang just in case. Reduces our cover removal, but we still got um, uh, cover removal from Wrath. So yeah, this team here should be able to deal with whatever comes uh, their way. Keep in mind, we have no upgraded gear whatsoever. So this here is just the absolute standard gear. We're not even having um, PCSs because we don't have a GTS. So that's this going to be interesting. Good, we landed. The big advantage here is it's almost like a smash and grab mission. We can take our time, essentially just move through the building, uh, take a good position that works for us. And then take it from there. There's not going to be any enemy inside of the building which is a huge advantage for us. So the idea is to get as close as possible without losing concealment. Then we're taking some high ground and hopefully we can I would say try to go for maybe in between four and six crates is realistic. I am on the move. Now we're going to take this position here. There is a bonus objective right there. Perfect. Time to motor. Divat moves up. So is Boom Boom. We've got movement. Okay, we know that there's probably going to be a pack down there. The great part about this area is we're Oh, hello, mutants. 
I was about to say the great part about this area is we are definitely going to have some sort of um, options to use remote start and remote start is an incredibly imbalanced ability See, that's a good start. I'm okay with uh, sacrificing one crate to basically almost one shot the mutant. No choice. We should try to avoid damaging the crates if we want to bring home anything useful. All right, Nivad moves up here. No need for us to do anything yet. Haywired could be the one moving over here just to secure that other crate. Because uh, Hayward has a lot of skills that do not require her to be together with the others. And likewise, Boom Boom is maybe better off by just standing here. All right. Advent will now trigger um, on the loss and vice versa, um, but that's fine. Loss will trigger on Advent. There you go, the mutant starts um, laying the hate on all of the loss. There you go. By the way, six points of damage is already almost always a one-shot kill. So even without critting, where we've now reached kind of the quote-unquote mid-game. Not not fully, but we're almost approaching the mid-game. Mutant is a pretty fierce contender, like 12 damage, just soaked it up like a boss. And you can see he's not missing. <laughs> he's just cleaning house. Holy shit. The losses are not standing a single bit of a chance against this machine. Alright, let's see what the loss can do. There you go, good job. The stun lancer is injured. All right, time to get our hands dirty with uh, Andy here. Nice little situation. Where we should be able to kill this mutant. Problem that I'm seeing is if we're missing there's a chance that we're going to be revealed. We definitely don't want that to happen, so instead we're just cowardly moving over there. That's affirmative. Affirmative. Diva overwatches, Boom Boom overwatches, and we are in a decent uh, spot.
<laughs> All right, this lost is hardcore. He's just taking it like a man. On the other hand, the mutant is still not having it. He's starting with a nice little suppression, and the loss starts to burn. And that seems to be the end of the Lost. Well, except for this hardcore Lost, who in return seems to try to win the prize uh, for being the baddest Lost on the block here. Yeah, the odds are not getting any better. It's 90% and I'm willing to take our chances. Um, we do have a backup plan if he wouldn't hit. We have still not left cover, uh, concealment rather. So that's good. Perfect. They are just lining up as if they wanted to tell us, guys, we need to be killed by another remote start. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's a tough pair of enemies over there. That's another crate which we are going to lose, but it's okay. Loss are going to draw in just a tiny bit closer. At the same time, we are in excellent positions here. Hmm, he would be in range for remote start, but our remote start does have a few um, seconds cooldown. Let's just make sure he's not cheesing his way um, in moving up to us and removing our concealment that way. Because uh, the AI at this point here gets a bit desperate and will start to do whatever they can. to, air quote, accidentally run into us. Good. Let's do some reloading. Overwatch. Okay, time to move down and get that last pack. My life is in your hands. Affirmative, covering now. Roger, I've got my eyes on. Eyes on the prize. All right. I could bet you that the Advent Officer will now start to move back into here.
Good, we're moving up. Moving as ordered. Haven't seen the enemies yet. Interesting, so the Advent Officer starts to explore the higher levels up here. That's fine. I go where you tell me. Still trying to find the last pack here. Once the officer comes closer... We might be able to eliminate him. But there's still one big pack to uh, with that... Um, with that enemy mech somewhere around here. All right, moving a bit closer. Eyes on the prize. Yeah, we can't reach them from here. Might as well start moving over here. Same for Boom Boom. Alright. Just in case this guy here comes any closer. There, they finally triggered the Lost. Okay, so far so good. Yeah, we're going to let the lost stay alive just so that they do have a target. This here kills the stun lancer. Heavily injures the mech. And we'll hopefully draw in some more loss. This Advent Officer really doesn't know where to go. Meanwhile, the Mutant will lay hate on all of uh, the losses again. He has missed that one, though. Okay. Losts are coming closer. It's going to be interesting to see how the dynamic between the Lost and the Mutant uh, would look like, because mutant ha uh, Mutants have the Retaliation attack, 
And I am wondering if that means that the lost would be killed automatically. Ooh, wow, that is, that is bad. That's pretty bad. You can't immediately dive back into the shadows. And it means we probably will need to just move. Marking the supply crate. We're picking up a steady signal from the transponder. Firebrand is en route to make the pickup. Moving back in, we don't want to trigger the Advent Officer if it isn't absolutely necessary. Good, moving up. Want to, don't want to stand too close to one another just in case if the uh, mech decides to go our way. Can't get on top of any of those, but what you can certainly just get into full cover plus our nice our nice um, a protocol. Yeah, that's the disadvantage of having them uh, essentially triggered uh, through uh, by the loss beforehand. All right, we're now going to see how the Muton reacts. He definitely gets his attack off. Firebrand is on deck for recovery. Keep marking those crates, Metis 1-5. Go medical! And boy, oh boy, Hayward is going to just be out of service for a long-ass period. Good, so that will take away not only his cover, but also let him drop. As he drops, he dies. And with that, a new fully fledged swarm arises, comes back in. And we got to deal with those guys here. All right, let's start killing the lost. That is one down. Yeah, we're probably going to kill the advent mech. Moving over here, just because it's a better spot. Not even close. We're not using teamwork yet. We're just going to Overwatch for now. Yeah, we're going to re-stealth. We could get that crate. 
but it would cost us um, our stealth again. Now I don't think that that is worth it. So instead we're just going into full cover, a tiny bit further away. Get another kill. Probably could have picked that crate up. Yeah, the overall problem is those mutants are pretty beefy. Well, we are definitely getting schooled by the loss. Now we fight in the open. Nice. We just got our uh, concealment revealed. So we could have simply gotten the crate in the first place. That is highly, highly disappointing. Okay, let's start with the obvious targets here. Roger that. Haywire moves into full cover. Kills the Dasher. Tries to kill another Dasher. Very nice. Tries to kill yet another Dasher. It's only minimum damage, but okay. There we go. Now, in terms of dealing with a mutant, since it's the last enemy, my take on it is better be safe than sorry. This will prevent him from throwing any grenades, potentially spawns another uh, wave of Losts very soon. And I just realized that uh, the Shredder perk of our um, of our um, Reaper is only available as long as he's in stealth. On the other hand, we just realized uh, if a mutant is disoriented, he cannot retaliate. Which is indeed quite interesting, I didn't know that.
moving closer to the mutant. And before we do anything, let's first of all start dealing with the loss here. There's the promotion. Very nice. Okay, so having enough damage, oh, that's only a 75% chance. But we can't just let the um, lost live. That is unfortunately not possible. So let's try to take them out. Reloading with Divot. Teamwork puts another uh, ability point down to Hayward. Hayward tries to kill that lost again. Very nice. Even better, might as well be able to heal us ourselves. That's unfortunately not a hit. In terms of just blowing something up. Few remote star targets, but none of them seem to be close to the mutant. So with Blood Trail, we're increasing the damage. And I mean, just given everything else, how about Haywar just heals herself? Yeah, that one was impossible to get, by the way. Gosh, we're not necessarily living up to our expectations. Without the Between the Eyes mod, it is really, really hard to deal with the loss. Gotta get more crates. Try to um, shred him finally. There we go. That was a nice little hit. And I think that we can now just finish him. Alright, that's one down. And let's get the mutant. There we go. Nice one. Well, not as good as it could have been. We got some pretty uh, nasty injuries on Hayward. Uh, so that might be another 20 days, 30 days even, where we cannot use her. Let's see how long that is going to last. I'm hoping for 15 days, but I fear the worst. 36 days. That means she's maybe out of the run even. Good, we got ourselves Sting. 
Taking that definitely. Tactical rigging. That way he can carry ammunition. Making it even better. Soul Harvest is also pretty damn good. If we're relying on a shitty weapon. Because it will increase uh, the a chance to crit. And that's where most of his damage is coming from. We got some decent supplies. The superior scope is definitely good. Larim Core is fantastic. That is great loot. I'm deeply, deeply disappointed uh, by the 36 days. The Grave Wound will just take forever. But I can't change that. That is that is bad. And we're we're definitely requiring support of a specialist. Shadow Chamber is done in one day. Alright. Examine the Codex Brain. So the Codex Brain will lead us uh, to uh, the Gate and uh, the Black Side Vial will lead us to the state, uh, Stasis Suit. I think we're going to go with the Codex Brain because that means we can also get the Avatar when we're doing uh, the Gate and the Black Side just needs to wait for now. Yeah, we're, we need to put that in even though plated armor is almost done. What we could do is we could see at the black market whether or not plated armor can be quote unquote rushed. Uh, that'll probably take a just a few points of intel because it's just one more day. No. Cannot be rushed. Let's say some stun lance or corpses. And some alien alloys. Um, one thing that we could do is, just out of curiosity, I think that we got the autopsy for free. Of the stun lancer, that is. Um, so yeah, we could upgrade the arc blade. I think that's worth it. We're okay with the supplies. So it means our rangers have at least a small weapon upgrade and will become better damage dealers. Unfortunately, the blade itself doesn't upgrade the Templar's attack whom we probably cannot use at this point um, because he's too low in level unless we can somewhat level him. I don't see how that would work. Good. Let's go for gaining some more intel in nine days. So at May 28th, we're done with the Codex Brain. We would need more scientists or speed up the research somehow. Nice little boost in supplies. Maximum power consumption reached. Good. We're taking an engineer here. Definitely an engineer for the um, covert ops missions. And in terms of building, we're finally going for the Guerrilla Tactics School, which in 14 days should be done. We can then purchase the upgrades. That leaves us with Digital Network for an additional resistance order slot. Might as well take that. 
resistance to the limit. We don't have any capacity to spare, which means we can't expand our facilities further. Yeah, that's fine. We do not need to expand anything any further. We're good. Um, yeah, so I think we're good. I can already foresee that we're probably not going to make it in time. Anything that we need to do prior to the supply drop? The answer is probably no. We got ourselves uh, the extra slot. So yeah, let's finish that uh, month. Well, she can now summon um, mechanical mechanical el um, enemies, so that's fine. We still need to get the rapid responses countered. Hopefully that's going to hap uh, happen. The advent alloy padding is bad as well, but I would rather take that. So in terms of just getting stuff, doubling scanned rumors, yes, please. Resistance contacts, yes, please. That's good. We were seldomly attacked by anyone psionically. So that's something which we might want to take in the next iteration. Um, and we might want to raise the influence here just to get more resistance orders. May 24th. Hmm. I am just checking the achievements here. Exquisite timing. Commander plus difficulty by July 1st or July 15th for War of the Chosen. So they added 14 days for War of the Chosen uh, due to effectively needing to deal with the Chosen and so on. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, maybe that is possible. So July 15th isn't too bad. That's two months from now. Still got the entire June and half of July and the rest of May. Okay, very nice. Four more days until the Codex Brain, which is exactly what we need to research. And that'll be another scientist, exactly what we need, plus 100 intel. So, although it's called Operation Shadow Tomb, we this is our chance to maybe speed up the research even a bit further. The game is benevolent uh, to us, so this here is exactly what we need. Thanks to the Shadow Chamber, we also uh, know that we're fighting against priests, uh, mech, viper, purifier, mutant, stun lancer. I'm almost expecting that at this point. So yeah, three more days until Codex Brain. The plated armor would be a nice addition. It would just be a huge upgrade for us. But let's stick with the Codex Brain for now. Once that's done, we're maybe squeezing in one day of plated armor just in case. And one more day until the Covert Ops mission behind enemy lines is done. That'll give us an additional resistance uh, order and uh, one um, additional slot um, to use it. So that would be good. We got Reduce Avatar Progress. We got 51 Intel for six days. That's great. That's more like it. Yeah, probably that it was a mistake to not upgrade it earlier to just run more, um, more missions. But on the other hand, I think the reduced mission time really stems mostly from the engineer that we have put in here, minus 33%. I'm not sure if the upgrade itself would have reduced the mission time but six days for 51 intel is exactly what we need um 
Form Soldier's Bond is not so good, but maybe we're getting a promotion or something out of it. Locate faction in 10 days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see about that. Not sure. Not sure yet. Okay, anyways, we're coming to the end of this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you want to support the channel, feel free to um, hit that juicy, juicy subscribe button and leave a comment down below. I like to interact with you. Thanks, take care, and see you soon. Bye-bye.